Hi guys, it's Sharon Marie from Journey to Health and Wellbeing. I hope that you're all having a wonderful December. Today, December 17th, 2018, it is my birthday, my 36th year birthday here on earth. I didn't do anything really for my birthday today because I woke up feeling pretty drained and tired. I am having some autoimmune flare-ups where I'm feeling very fatigued and very tired and I believe also our household is coming down with coughs and colds so I just didn't want to go out and celebrate my birthday feeling like this so pretty much all day I've just been resting in bed we are going to have to run some errands tonight, just go to Walgreens and Sam's Club just to pick up a few things. I never like the holiday rush, so I, uh, yeah, I think this might be the last time that we actually get out and get what we need and then just leave it from there. So I'm not sure what day we will be going out for lunch or dinner somewhere. Usually we do Longhorn or Cracker Barrel, something like that. But it definitely will make up for today, even though, like, today's my birth, today's my actual birthday. So what I'm really blessed for this year is that I have another year that I'm alive. Uh, over two years ago, I was pretty much, much at death's door with my health. I was having bad heart pain, I was having back pain, I was having back spasms, I couldn't get myself out of, the, out of bed, I felt so miserable, depressed depressed and anxious all the time, uh, having panic attacks and I'm just so grateful that I made it to 36 years of age because my, my whole family have sort of died of tragic uh, events and accidents and now it's just my mum and I in like our blood related family that are left so it, it's kind of sometimes can be a little bit daunting every time a birthday comes around you wonder will I make it will I make it so I made it to this 36 years wow 36 years a lot has happened over 36 years of my life and I won't go too much into detail but uh, this year has been one of the hardest, toughest years yet, I would say. I have been through quite a lot, not just myself, but my husband, especially with losing our Charlie and the way that his death came about too. There was some negligence with our vet. They didn't give him the insulin when he needed, when we brought him in. His numbers were over 700. They waited two days to give him a tiny little bit of insulin and then they took we took him to the emergency animal vets because they did not have the insulin. It was on back order. So we had to go to our, our emergency animal vets and they still, two days into treatment, with him being on IV, they still did not give him the insulin. And it just breaks my heart because he was really suffering and it was the damage was being done. So why I wanted to probably just get on here quick and tell you the story of what really happened to Charlie because I know at the time we felt really overwhelmed and tired and just exhausted about everything that was happening like it was just it was crazy we, di we didn't think I when I I could call the vet and I could ask how's he doing any any day any at any hours I could call so I'd call every couple of hours to see how he's doing and I said why has he not had the insulin that he should be having oh we're just making sure that we're flushing his kidneys so I have actually put a review up on Google reviews for the vet's office which is Cuddle Creek here in uh, North Carolina and also Huntersville Animal Hospital, Emergency Animal Hospital, I have mentioned them also. If you see a slight change in your animal, if your animal is not, if, it, if he or she is not acting right, 
take them to the vet because it could mean life or death and that's what it meant for Charlie was life or death. He had been sick for a little bit but we did get him there as soon as we could. Our vet did say that there was a little slight elevation in his blood glucose, but they didn't think it was worth mentioning. It is worth mentioning. Anything slightly elevated in your pet's lab work should be told to the owners. They are responsible for your pet. They have a duty of care for your pet. So make sure that you speak up for your animals because they can't speak up for themselves. We have to fight for our fur babies or feather babies or whatever animal that you have. We have to speak up for them and we have to fight for them. And that's why I am sharing Charlie's story today with you on my birthday I didn't think I was going to do it on my birthday I thought that I would be too emotional it's it has taken me five months to get strong enough to talk about this and probably when I'm done talking about this I will break down because that's just what I do but we have to really just be an advocate for our animals if we think that something is wrong, speak up and make sure that your vet is paying close attention and that they're not being complacent with you. Because like I said, if they had have given our Charlie his insulin, he may have still have been here. There was no way of checking his blood sugars when he returned home with us. We didn't have a blood glucose meter to check. They just said, um, take him to your vets. Well, it was too late to take him to the vets. He was, he had died in my arms that Sunday. We got him on a Friday and he was gone on a Sunday. And it just breaks my heart. I do not want anyone else to go through the pain and the grief that myself and my husband have gone through. Like it's just, it's devastating and it's devastating at this time of the year with the holidays coming up, with Christmas coming up. It's not always merry and bright. People are lonely. They have lost loved ones. They've lost fur babies. And our baby was only six years old. He was so young and he still had so much life left in him. And he, he just fought and fought and fought. He fought so hard. And I'm just like, I'm honoured to be his mummy. And I just want to share with you his story because he can't share it now. He's up in heaven and he's having a, I'm sure he's having a great time. But today I miss him more than I've missed anyone. I've cried more for Charlie than I've cried for anyone. And it's just it's really hard to make this video, but I just wanted to just come to you all today to say that if you have an animal who's it who's sick, make sure that you read all the reviews on your on the vets. Make sure that you talk to people about where is a good vet. And make sure that if you're buying from a breeder or you're buying from a shelter, make sure that you check into that animal's history into it's their uh their their health their medical history it just we have to do all of our homework for for this because down the road there's going to be much heartache like there was for us so i just hope that this has reached out to someone today um Today I just put some stick-on nails here. These are from Impress. Now I like them because they've got little, uh, if you can see, they've got little Christmas trees on them. But they don't so much stay on very well, especially like if you've got your hands in the water and if your nails are not long enough, you've got to kind of have enough nail to press it on. But they're just nice to go out, you know, for the day just to put them on. But, yeah, that's the little self-care that I've done for myself today uh, uh, on my birthday. And I'm just so grateful to Keto for me still being here. My, my loving husband, he has been my greatest supporter my mom has been my greatest supporter without them i wouldn't be here without their encouragement and their love and motivation i wouldn't be here that like they're just they're my everything you know they're my rock 
they really get me through my tough my toughest days like my husband has pulled me out of the hole several several times um especially of late just when I've been in that dark place he's just held me and told me that everything's going to be all right and it's hard on him too because he's grieving and it's it's an emotional time for him too so it it's a very emotional time over the holidays when we miss our loved ones my mum's halfway across the the world we're not together this Christmas and it's just really hard so sometimes you know when you talk to someone that's next to you you don't know what they're going through they could be suffering with clinical depression and that's what I want to do a video about is what does clinical depression look like how does someone that's going through clinical depression feel like what are their thoughts what's going on in their mind how can you help them how can you make them feel better how can you how can you be there to support them through that because I know that at the time when I was going through all my clinical depression, I really needed someone to reach out to and there was nobody. So I'm going to be doing a series of videos on depression, anxiety and grief. But today I just wanted to come to you and say another year. Uh, let's hope that 2019 is a better year for all of us going into my 37th year of life. And I'm just so thankful that keto has really saved my life. I've got the weight off. I'm trying to get healthier. And uh, it's just the mental, the mental well-being now and the wellness and fixing these health uh, issues that I have. So thank you so much to everyone who has wished me a happy birthday, either on YouTube, on Facebook, Instagram. I really appreciate all your messages and texts. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. And I'll see you in my next vlog. Have a wonderful December 17th, 2018. Bye for now. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye.